Good morning guys, Matt here for another Daily Shave video and today I'm going to be covering Check and Speak Oxford and Cambridge shaving soap. Some of my other lineup I'll run through right now is my new Dovo Bismarck razor, it's a 6 8 and my Simpsons Polo, Polo 8 in Super, um, it's a 25 millimeter knot. So with that, I'm going to wet the face and get started. <clears throat> Shake out my brush. It's been soaking. Fill my scuttle with some hot water. And let's talk a little bit about this soap. So, it's a hard puck. Uh, here's the puck. It um, has this nice stamp in it, check and speak, and it says uh, Jermaine Street, London. Now, I don't have a bowl, so it comes, you can get it in a bowl or just by the refill like this. And I'm just gonna scrub it here back and forth off of the puck in my hand. And I don't have the bowl. The bowl is very expensive. And I'm not one who cares that much for packaging. I care more about the scent and the performance of the soap. Uh, to me, it's more about the shave experience that um, that's more important to me. Um, and I couldn't justify paying uh, kind of exorbitant, or for me, what's exorbitant prices for a um, just a container. So what I do, I'll just load the brush and then just let the soap dry and then put it back in the cardboard box. So I'm going to wet the face and just kind of do a face lather here. So this soap, it is expensive. But I do find that the performance is very good and the scent is exceptionally good. Although it is a bit on the mild side, so on a scale of 0 to 10, I would say um, it's about a 5. A 4 or a 5. It might be average, slightly below average as far as the strength of the scent. But it's a very, very nice scent. I really enjoy the scent. So Oxford and Cambridge, I'm gonna add some water to the tasty. And slowly add water, water and build my lather. So Oxford and Cambridge is a um, lavender scent. To me, it's kind of like a lavender barbershop, like a very classy lavender barbershop scent. I think some of the notes in it are lavender, citrus, and rosemary, and then there's also some mint in it. And it does have a very, very mild sensation, like cooling sensation to it. Also oak moss, which I think gives it that barbershop vibe. And I think it's very versatile scent. If you have the, um, I do not have the aftershave or the cologne that they make. They're primarily a fragrance house. I think this scent actually came out in the 90s, mid 90s at some point. But as far as the quality of the scent, I think it's excellent quality scent to my nose. I 
Now, as you can see, this lather, it doesn't produce the most like a big inch thick lather. It makes more of this kind of like creamy, but slick lather and it's very slick. Now, I'm not 100% certain of this, but on the package, it does say that the soap is made in Italy and Check and Speak is uh, located in London. <clears throat> and I suspect that the soap is made by a company called Velobra. Um, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I did check the Velobra base and it appears that the ingredients are more or less identical. So I, I suspect it's made by Velobra, but you know, so if you have experience with Velobra, you might, um, and you enjoy it, you might enjoy this soap. Okay. So for my tip of the day, um, I'm going to be shaving, showing you how to use your wrist while shaving. And what this is all about is economy of movement. So I find that it's most comfortable and the least awkward way to shave is to try to minimize the arm movements as much as possible and to try to use your hands to shave and your wrist. So my basic movement would be this movement. Um, but I'll go, as I go through my shave, I'll just show you what I'm trying to achieve. And the, I think the idea for me to have the most comfortable shave and uh, is to try to eliminate unnecessary movements, eliminate arm movements, and use hand movements, which I think you get uh, much more fine control by using hand movements. So um, I'll just demonstrate as I go through. So here I'm just using, this is my basic movements. And uh, if you'll notice, I'm trying to keep my arm really as steady as possible. So I'm not, and I'm using my wrist to shave my hands, my wrist to shave, and trying to keep my elbow locked as much as possible, my arm not moving around as much as possible. Now this Dovo razor that I'm using, it's a German razor. It's from uh, Zollingen, uh, Germany. Uh, very old company, it's been around since the turn of the century, the 20th century. I think they started making the Bismarck razor in 1957, which is this model. Although I don't think it, it didn't look exactly the same. This is like a faux ivory and um, it is shoulderless. It's a shoulderless razor with a round point and it has this interesting diamond shaped spine on it. But it holds a very nice edge. As you can see again, I'm trying to keep my arm relatively stationary and use my wrist to shave with.
scent is really an intoxicating scent. The lavender is a sweet kind of lather, lavender. And as you can see, the lather, I'm not making like a super thick, dense lather. It's more of a creamy, slick, slick, creamy, slick lather. <clears throat> so again, I'm going to be keeping my arms straight and just using my wrist in this kind of windshield wiper motion. Now this move, that's, this movement, I covered in another video, my um, Mitchell's Wolfat video, what, which I call the Godfather. So I call this movement the Godfather, and this movement, when I'm getting the opposite side of my face, my left side, this is eating soup, which is basically you're supinating your wrist. And again, so the wrist movement, I'm keeping my arm steady. And just following the curve of the hollow of my neck using my wrist. And I think the advantage of shaving like this is it's a very natural movement and it keeps the blade flat against, relatively flat against your skin at a shallow angle. And it does, it follows the curve under your neck, under the jawline, especially. And the lather's looking a little bit thin. My brush is hogging it a little bit. I'm gonna just pull some of the lather out here and then paint it on. Lather's a little bit too wet. It's dripping a little.
Now, of course, this technique, this works well for me, but if you're more comfortable locking your wrist and using your whole arm to shave, you should by all means stick with what works for you. I just find that using uh, hand movements as much as possible and trying to eliminate any extra unnecessary movements makes for a less awkward shave. area. I'm going to put a little alum on my fingers. It is slick. <clears throat> okay. The post shave on the soap is also very good. As usual, I'm gonna apply some moisturizer before I put on my alcohol-based aftershave. If I'm using one that's more of a um, aloe, witch hazel aftershave, alcohol-free, you can go ahead and put that directly on your face before your moisturizer, but I find that this takes out a lot of the sting and irritation. <clears throat> and for the aftershave, I'm gonna be using fine lavender for home, which is uh, based on this scent. So it is pretty close, it's not identical. I'd say the mint menthol is higher in this one, and the lavender does smell a bit sweeter to me than the check and speak, but it is a lot cheaper. So if you're looking for a bargain, um, you might, and you like the scent of the soap, you might wanna check out a fine aftershave. It's actually a pretty good kick of menthol in it. Um, feels very nice, but no burn. Now this fine aftershave, it does last pretty long for me. So it lasts about five hours, but it really like uh, projects for maybe the first hour. And then after that, it's, um, you know, really close to your skin. <clears throat> so again, I think it is good for a work environment, um, but I think you can really, it's really versatile. You could wear it really anytime. And it really does just kind of remind me of a, a barbershop, lavender, sweet lavender scent. Um, I really enjoy it. And I hope you enjoyed the shave and my tips. And uh, I'll catch you guys soon.